Like other American cities, Columbus was being transformed by a transportation revolution. People were moving away from downtown, and they commuted to streetcar suburbs. And what they're finding is, is that the streetcars are quite busy during the morning commute into the city and in the afternoon leaving the city, but the cars are running practically empty during the middle of the day. To keep their cars full between rush hours, the streetcar companies created amusement parks at the far reaches of their lines in the University District. Great amusement parks in Columbus, like Olentangy Park and Indianola Park near the University area, attracted thousands of people per day. William and Joseph Duesenberry were uh, wealthy men here in Columbus that uh, traveled the world. They would find something that appealed to them, a Japanese garden, artifacts from all over the world. The park honored the community's history. David Beer's old mill was a prominent attraction, but it ushered in a new age. The rides and amusements reflected the transition from the prim and proper Victorian age to a new freewheeling casual culture. In the Victorian era, especially towards the late 19th century, middle class propriety demanded certain kinds of rituals and rules that governed how young people of the opposite sex interacted. It often involved chaperones, it often involved trying to make this as little fun as possible. Olentangy Park would have been this wonderful destination for people to cut loose. People from different ethnic groups, different class groups, and of course, different gender groups. It's a place where you can go to escape all of those proprieties. My twin brother and I used to ride our bikes down to the park, and there was an elephant named Tanda. They asked my cousin and I to get up on the elephant, so we had our picture taken. It was in the dispatch. <laughs> the one that is not as well known is the one that came out North Forth, Indianola Park, and it had everything. It had uh, shoot the shoots, and it had roller coasters, even had diving horses and flea circuses. The 1900s usher in a golden age for the University District. Innovative leaders and residents collaborated on improvements on education, government, the arts, and other disciplines. That's what a university is for. It was the one that attracted the best intellects of the time. I think the neighborhood has always been an incubator for creativity on a lot of different levels. Indianola Junior High School, which is located at Indianola and 16th Avenue, it's the first junior high school in the United States. Prior to Indianola, the dropout rate for school students at eighth grade was pretty high. Most kids just didn't go on to high school. They would go into factories, they would go into labor jobs, and these were generally lower paying positions. And the university and the community got together and came up with this experimental school that was designed specifically to help students transition through those years so that they had the opportunity to make it into high school. Indianola Junior High School is tried out in this neighborhood because the university area has both the people and the community resources to make the school a success. The program is so successful that Howard Dwight Smith designs the country's first school that is specifically made to be a junior high. It's built at North 4th and 19th Avenue. 